Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Blue and Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys and you ladies, this literally does not work. So let's get open for this here. And let's wake up football gods here. Wake up this morning. It is finally freaking Friday. And one week from today, we'll be talking about who the Dallas Cowboys drafted in the first round or traded back or traded up. Or we'll be talking about whatever the Dallas Cowboys did. That's what we'll be doing. We'll be talking about what the Dallas Cowboys did and who the hell knows what they're going to do. I know I sure don't know. Uh, I would like to know what they're going to do, but the reality is, is they're going to baffle us with bullshit. Now, before I get into everything a little bit deeper, um, I'm glad to hear Emily Ann's husband, who works on an oil rig, um, was having some really bad pains in his side, and he was airlifted and everything else. Fortunately, he's doing better, and he's going to be going home, actually, today. So, Emily Ann, you know, I'm, I'm, my thoughts and prayers are with you, and glad that he is doing better um also last night man it's, it's just like wow i'm old and i don't say that to be negative that oh man i'm just so old. no i'm old and i'm proud that i'm still here i feel blessed that i'm still here because it seems like we've lost so many people this year friends family and people that we, you know, partied with or looked up to or listened to. And last night, um, I heard that Shock G, just 57 years old, Shock G passed away. Um, for those of you who are saying who, um, Shock G was actually Humpty Hump, okay? Humpty Hump, uh, you know, from Digital Underground, you know, where Tupac started out. Um, Shock G, you know, was a character costume, of course, being Humpty Hump. So, you know, Shock G, the one who put the satin on your panties. Yeah, that guy. Um, he passed away. And it's just like, you know, I'm an 80s rap child, okay? That's when I was in college and stuff. And so to know that, you know, we lost uh, Prince Marky D, you know, from the Fat Boys, that, you know, we end up losing DMX, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. You know, now we lose Shock G or Humpty Hump, whichever one you go to. You know, there's Ecstasy from Houdini, and it's just like, man, you got to make sure you appreciate each and every day and make sure that you don't wait to do something. If you got a dream or something that might seem crazy, don't wait. Don't put it off. Go for your dreams. Put full effort forth in trying to do what you want to do because you may not have the time if you put it off. And people that you care about, be sure you let them know how much you care about them, how much they mean. And I got to tell you, I love all y'all. Well, some of you eagle ones, I like you. Some of you I just tolerate. But the rest of you, I love all of y'all. So the draft, the draft. It's great listening to all of the mock drafts and all of the uh, stuff that goes on, you know, the predictions. And, you know, we've literally heard everything from us getting an offensive tackle to us getting a linebacker to us getting the cornerback, getting Patrick Sertan, you know, to trading up to Kyle Pitts. The reality is, is nobody really knows. And anybody who honestly knows how somebody's career is going to turn out is full of shit. Sorry. They just are. You know, Mel Kuyper was all on board with saying Josh Rosen was the best quarterback prospect in that draft. Yeah. Everybody basically said Dak Prescott. Um, nah, not going to make it. Colin Cowherd said he's really a tight end. So... You make the best educated decision that you can. And I, I, I've been trying to put together the pieces here, okay? Now, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. You know I'm a defensive guy. I know a lot of y'all have turned the thing up. The defense really wasn't quite that bad. New coach, you know, and uh, some of these other guy, younger guys, you know, we get Tristan Hill back and he'll be better and Gallimore will be better. And, you know, we, we, we got 10 picks. So, you know, we can use the first couple on offense and then we'll go ahead and take care of the defense down the road. And I'm just like, okay, all right, 
whatever. The reality is, is it's all speculation by us. It really doesn't matter what we think. It's really what Jerry, Stephen, and Will McClay think. But I like to try and put together the pieces, and the pieces are leading me more to J.C. Horn than Patrick Sertan. We know that Patrick Sertan, J.C. Horn, and Clab Farley are probably the, the cream of the crop of who they think are going to be the great cornerbacks. That's who we believe are going to be the great cornerbacks. We don't know for sure until a couple years down the road. We thought we had the best defender in Morris Claiborne in the draft, and that kind of blew up in our face after spending a first and a second into it uh, for him, which made that draft exciting at first and then kind of boring until the third day, in which case the third day is kind of boring too. But be that as it may, um, putting the pieces together, seeing Jerry Jones – go goo-goo-eyed over Kyle Pitts. That's the dog whistle that everybody's going after. Oh, my God. Just like Johnny Manziel was. Jerry, hey, you know, I'll pair you up with good old Dak Prescott. You know, you know yeah, it's, it's sugar plums dancing all over again. I still don't know what that means, but it's sugar plums dancing. Um, but – Digging deeper into that conversation, it's kind of like a lot of times teams, when they're looking for a new coach, will bring in, of course, several candidates, and they'll pick the brains. They know they're not going to hire that person, but they're trying to get a view or get some insight on some things that you may have done that they may be able to use. You want to be open-minded because everybody can teach you something. And they ask Kyle Pitts, who was the toughest player you played against and he played against both Patrick Sertan and J.C. Horn and he said without a doubt it was J.C. Horn and why so there's that there's also how he wowed him at their pro day wow the Cowboys the Cowboys were impressed really impressed at his pro day. And here's the third thing I will say to you is, let me see if I got it here. This, this right here, I don't know how well you guys can see the numbers and stuff on there. Homegrown players. These are teams that have been built the most from homegrown players. That means from guys you've drafted. Guys that you've, you know, undrafted rookie free agents and things or practice squad guys that you've developed. Percentage of their roster that is built up by homegrown talent, as in, as opposed to signing big name free agents. You see the Ravens, they're great at finding personnel, 72%. Vikings, 71%. Uh, Packers, 67 Rams, 66 Chargers, 62 And Cowboys. I'm actually surprised by the Rams number. Because you think about how much they trade their number one picks and um, how many free agents they sign. I'm actually surprised that they're at 66%. But be that as it may, Cowboys are actually at 62, tied with the Chargers for fifth. Which means that most of their talent, they get from the draft. And so the Cowboys truly need to make the most out of this draft. And every draft, because that's where they really fall. You don't see Stephen Jones really going, you know, all ham ham in on bringing in big-name free agents. They just don't do it. They do it because we have to do it. We have to plug some of these holes, but we're not going to spend a whole bunch of money doing it. You know, they just saved a whole bunch of money by uh, switching to Geico, so to speak. So here's the thought behind what I'm thinking. If you believe that Patrick Sertan, Clep Farley, who is injured, and Patrick Sertan, I'm mean, excuse me, uh, J.C. Horn, are the cream of the crop, that they're really, really good, and this guy wowed you, and the, the best tight end out there said that this guy is the best prospect, would it behoove you, depending on how the draft is flowing, okay? Some people who think that there may be five quarterbacks taken 
in the top 10. If it ends up being that there's a run on quarterbacks and somebody like New England wants to trade, New England would be the one that I would love to trade with, get their uh, 15th pick. Excuse me, sorry, I got a little bit of a uh, sinuses, cold air and all that, had a window open last night. I didn't mean to snort on, on air, but, you know, this is broke-ass media. One take Charlie here because uh, we ain't got money for more film. Uh, no, nobody uses film. Okay, all right, so it's stupid. Okay, anyway. If you believe that he's really, really good and a guy that can work in your system and not just saying, I'm not going to go get on a hype train just because Pat Shurtan is the guy. And you can get him. And let's say New England decides, hmm, we'd like your pick. He, they trade you that one. You switch places. And you can get J.C. Horn, a guy that you're really, really impressed with. And now you've got two top half second round picks if it's about getting homegrown talent you could probably package those up maybe it'll take another additional pick but you might be able to package that up and get back into that first round and get another player maybe maybe jc horn is is a step down a slight step down from patrick tertan but if I can get another starter out of that, another first rounder, you're increasing the high talent that you have at that home ground grown uh, roster. Just putting it out there. It's no crazier than some of the other things that I've heard that the Cowboys are going for the generational player and Kyle Pitts and trading up and doing this. That. I mean, yeah, everybody's all over the map. Everybody's got their own theories. And the reality is very few of them will actually be right because it's the NFL draft. Shit changes. It gets crazy. And before I get out of here, this is the one-year anniversary. And um, it's not an anniversary you want to celebrate. But one year ago, today, the draft was going on. We were sitting right here during the pandemic where it was just me and Michael, and of course, you guys, the studio audience uh, that were up here. We had the Zoom in call. We had Philly 500 on the other monitor over there. I got it a little bit better this year. It'll be pitcher and pitcher for Philly 500. So that way, y- you got a clear picture of him um, as he melts down. And, and we got a bigger screen. You, you're only 32, you're on a 55. So we're increasing that. But I remember, sadly, um, during that draft when I had a friend of mine that notified me about Dak Prescott's brother passing. Um, and I was on here live at that point. That was one year ago today. And um, I'm sure today's going to be a hard day for Dak Prescott. <sighs> yeah. We have lost too much over the last year plus we have truly lost too much all right y'all you know the deal i got a lot of work to do i got more joe barties tune in tonight nine o'clock eastern we'll be giving away one of these tonight um and i've got to get some more made because we'll be giving plenty of them away during the draft um thursday friday and saturday um Hopefully, I think DMV will be here tonight. We'll get our final draft show in uh, before we have the draft. And as always, friends, our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blues Sports Report. 